Damon Amendolara, approver of the show and of Anthony's liking of, of dumplings, is with us uh, here in Vegas. What's up? Are you awake? Uh, yeah. I'm alive. Awake is a stretch, but I'm alive. You know, I'm going on the air locally 3 a.m., so yep. last night, not a lot of sleep. Basically, my week has been a series of naps. Yeah. Which, so what was worse, the sleep regression of your newborn child or this week? Well, they're, they're difficult in two different ways. The, <laughs> the child was most difficult just from a sheer endurance standpoint because yeah. we had to stay up at all hours. He would not sleep unless he was in our arms. So we had to tag in at 1 a.m., tag in at 4 a.m., et cetera. This is harder just because I'm also consuming alcohol. And so that's mm. made it a little bit more difficult just that's to like... That's a choice. <laughs> yes, but it is you also Vegas. You could gone your, your sleep deprivation and you were basically <laughs> drunk already. That's actually like how the brain chemistry works. You, you know? know what? Also, I actually have to perform here. When right, I was, that's the thing. When also, I was watching, you, have to, you have to speak. When I was watching AJ, you know, I'm just all I'm doing is just, just you, keeping my eye, yeah. eyes open with toothpicks. I'm not performing. No, you have to. You have to not just speak. You have to speak in like coherent sentences and yes. talk to people. Slightly. What's been your uh, your favorite interview uh, over on SiriusXM this week? Troy Palomalo came by and um, he said two things that blew me away. Number one, he said he did a Head and Shoulders commercial with Patrick Mahomes, and ever since the commercial, Mahomes has sent him a gift every month. Every month, right? Your eyes go up too. Like, wh who sends anybody anything every month besides like spam? <laughs> and that is just such a thoughtful thing from Patrick Mahomes that speaks to, I think, an emotional intelligence that he has for teammates, for the fans, for the moment, for the opponents. The other thing that Troy said Dude, was... Wait, Tone, did he tell you what the gift is? No. Oh. No. What if it was just like a bottle of Head & Shoulders? Because <laughs> well, that, be, that would be funny. Right, he just told, told his PR person. That he just, yeah, he's like, hey, make sure that yeah. you know we get so much of this, Brittany's trying to tell me to get it out of the house. Yeah, you know, yeah. Can, you, can you fix that for us? The second thing that Troy said was he won two Super Bowls, one with Bill Cowher, one with Mike Tomlin. And he yes. said, in the 08 Super Bowl, that's that classic game in which James Harrison returns the Kurt Warner interception, 100 yards, 99 yards. That's the San Antonio Holmes tiptoe catch. Yes. That in that Going into that game, Mike Tomlin was so laid back with the team, Palomalo was scared they were too loose. He's like, we got no, no guardrails no around juice. here. No nothing. And he said Tomlin knew the team well enough, but Palomalo was paranoid. And that is so interesting because if you now extrapolate that to today, the concern in Pittsburgh has been that Tomlin is so much of a player's coach, but he doesn't have natural leaders – things kind of go askew. And I thought, boy, you go back to 08, it worked for that team, but maybe that is the worst thing for the Steelers today. And you also don't think about Tomlin as being not buttoned up with details and discipline, but Palomalo was paranoid they were too loose. That's pretty fascinating. And also, I would love to have Pittsburgh's problems. Are right. you kidding me? Like, right. how He's never had a losing season. No. You know how many losing seasons I've covered? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. All of them, basically. All of them. All of them. I've, I've covered teams, Damon, that have won divisions with losing seasons. Well, and Troy Palomalo didn't play in the Ice Age. Like, he's relatively recent, and he played in three Super Bowls, two of which under Mike Tomlin. Yeah. So I, I get Steelers fans are impatient. They're frustrated. They haven't won a playoff game in a number of years. At the same time, the current head coach has coached in two Super Bowls. Hard to get rid of a guy that's coaching two Super Bowls that hasn't had a losing season. Yeah, like you're, you're, we just didn't have the bad year, so we can fire him. Maybe it'll happen in 2058. Yeah. Uh, Damon Amendolara, Sirius XM. You can catch him 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern time, which unfortunately for him is 3 to 6 Pacific uh, since we are sitting here in Las Vegas. Uh, you actually have a, you have a local take that uh, I would like to discuss with you. Yeah. You, uh, you, you were not a fan oh, of the Cliff Kingsbury God. hire. Oh, God. Um, and this I got guy. to admit, this I, uh, I think at first started very much where you were. I've warmed to it a bit. So I'm curious, like, let's, let's for the audience that hasn't heard, the Cliff Kingsbury take. Where are you at on Cliff Kingsbury, commander's offensive coordinator? And then we can have a little discussion. Well, I think he's the biggest fraud in football because... Oh, that soft, soft uh, launch there. Because he has not succeeded anywhere he's been to any significant degree. When he gets the head coaching job at Texas Tech, he never has a winning record within the Big 12. He's supposed to be a great offensive mind. With Patrick freaking Mahomes, his best season is 7-5 and five and a loss of the Texas Bowl. 
Then he somehow fails upward to get the head coaching job in Arizona. Every Tech fan was like, this guy's a bum. Then he gets the Cardinals job. Every year is the same thing. They start off hot. They collapse down the stretch. The one year they go to the postseason, they are completely ill-prepared to take on that Rams team. They're down 21-0 at the half, 28-0 in the third quarter. His team is known for penalties, poor coaching, sloppy play, and slow starts and or fades in the second half of the season. Then he goes to USC, and Caleb Williams has a worse season with him than he had without him, and USC crashes and burns. Now, I know that their defense was the bigger problem, but there were three other teams in the Pac-12 that scored more points per game than USC, and now he's going to take over a Washington gig because they're angling for Caleb, perhaps, and they know that there's a familiarity there. I just think this guy has never proven anything. It just keeps getting plum jobs. So everything you said uh, in terms of the, the resume information is inarguably true. That's kind of how uh, resumes work. That's well, right. Well, not for everybody, but that's, that's a different story. That's, <laughs> there's some wacky. George O'Leary? There. Yeah, I was, I was like, there's a couple famous instances. That's, a, that's certainly one of them. Um, but I think when you look at, like, uh, you take a closer look at some of those stops, it was really the defense in a lot of those cases. I mean, how many, like, 50 to 48 games did he lose at Tech? And so he is taking the offensive coordinator job, not the head coaching job. If somebody hired Cliff Kingsbury as a head coach, I would have, I wouldn't even have question. It'd just be like, what, I guess, what are you doing is a question. But I would be like, I, I don't really care what your answer is. That was a bad decision. Him as an offensive coordinator where he doesn't have to worry about the defense and perhaps can not fade because he is not worrying about the defense in the second half of the year or pretending to care about the defense the second half of the year is much more intriguing and I think you start to talk to people around the league and there's a lot of respect for what he does offensively even if everyone's like yeah but he's not a head coach I understand I'm the bucket of cold water in a pool of optimism and nobody wants that and in DC I don't blame you guys you guys have dealt with a lot of losing a lot of bad Washington offense a lot of bad commanders football I totally get why you'd want to believe in Cliff Kingsbury but there's two things problematic and you're right Head coach, he's a total bum. Offensive coordinator, perhaps better. Two things still worry me. Number one, his offense consistently got less effective as year as the year season went, wore on. I think defensive coordinators picked up on tendencies, and I don't think he's a very good game planner. I think he tends to stick to what he does and doesn't invest time in evolving that over the course of the season. The second thing that worries me is if you can't do it, with Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, and Caleb Williams, what makes me think you can do it in the NFL with a rookie quarterback, which is going to happen this season for Washington? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, and I think those are the concerns. Um, I, I guess the things that would – and I, to be clear, like I, these are the questions, right? I'm going to underline that again to, to say that like I agree with you that those are the questions. They are counting on the answers being, one, we had Dan Quinn on the show earlier this week, and you described Cliff as an elite competitor, which I think is interesting and, in, like, talking to people what around. What coach isn't? But, like, there's, there's levels to that. We are know some that, coaches lazy about competition? Uh, I would say some are lazier than others. Uh, you want to look at the guy that was in charge here the last four years? I okay, so you here. don't think he was very competitive, Ron Rivera? I don't think that Ron Rivera was as competitive as Sean McVay. I don't think Ron Rivera is competitive as Dan Quinn. I don't think Ron Rivera is competitive as a lot of other Boy, NFL I mean, coaches. Ron Rivera like, there's played players on the this. 85 Bears. He's not competitive. He doesn't but, want it as badly as Sean McVay does. The draw. I, I think Ron cared about because to me, like it's also how do you define competitiveness, right? Like, is it about your drive to win, your hatred of losing, like all of those things? Like, I think Ron cared about a lot of other stuff, like narrative driven, much more than like what was ultimately going to get me the results. And maybe also his the point in his career where he had For already sure. done stuff. And, and like, to be fair to Ron Rivera, the man has a lot of life perspective. Like, the battle with cancer was very, very real. Like, that can take a hit. And he was dealing with a lot of other stuff. But I, I do think that what they're relying on is that Cliff, now with more time to figure out the offense, will do that as opposed to. Oh crap! I got to prepare for a team meeting because I'm the head coach and I probably shouldn't be. I hope so. Look, I, I do. I, I hope so. But there was a moment in his tenure with the Cardinals that will forever bother me, and that was in year number four. He, early in the season, said, "I don't like our practice habits. I don't like our focus. I don't like our mentality. We're taking things for granted." It's year four. That's your job. Whose job is the mentality of the team but Cliff Kingsbury? 
Now, I realize it's different as an OC yes. than a head coach. But, I mean, take some responsibility, dude. It's your team. You know what I think is hilarious? You sound like all of us screaming about Ron Rivera the last four years. <laughs> well, okay. uh, that's David Amendolora. You catch him 6 to 9 a.m. on Sirius XM. Uh, Bomani Jones, he's standing right there, and he's going to take ready. Damon's seat next. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.